And now you've got a full screen view of Adobe Premiere Rush running on your phone through the TV with a keyboard and mouse. You're practically editing uh, on Premiere. So two months ago, I downloaded Adobe's new Premiere Rush app for Android phones. Now this is their dumbed down version of Premiere Pro that you can get on the computer, and you can also get it now on your phone. At the time I was heading away to Melbourne for a week for work, and I figured out what better time than test out mobile video editing than when I'm stuck in a hotel room without my editing PC. So in this video, I wanna check out if it's worth purchasing this app, and as always, it worth your time and effort to try and edit in Premiere Rush on Android. So stick around and we'll check it out today. So when I first started making this video, I was going over all the basics. I talked about how you can hold your thumb down on the clip that will allow you to move it forwards and back. Holding your thumb down on the start or the finish will trim the clip. Tapping the button third from the right will give you multi-layer, allowing you to stack clips on top of each other. However, when you stack it on top of each other, any clips on the first layer will snap back in underneath, so you need to fill it with something blank or like a title that you can't see. Speaking of titles, just swipe across and you'll be able to access titles, transitions, color, all the extra features for the clip. Now where this app really shines is tablet mode. So let me just show you how I achieved that with my phone. So, it's gonna need something like a table, like this one. And uh, how cool is this? This exhibition is actually something that's in Bendigo, so I uh, travel from home and they've got flyers and stuff. It's in my hometown, it's like two hours away from here. Anyway, we're gonna use this table. Let's uh, flip you down. So next up, you're gonna need a HDMI cable. Plug that into your TV and uh, then into your adapter. Now, if you don't know how to plug a HDMI cable into a TV, to be honest, you probably should just quit this video. Uh, it might be in a bit over your head uh, with uh, what we're gonna be doing. So, plug it into your phone now and turn the TV on. Make sure you set the TV to the HDMI source that your cable has been plugged into. Okay, so now set the HDMI source to the TV. And um, let me just see if I can get rid of that flicker. One moment. Nope, oh, looks like the uh, TV is gonna flick for this. They've used a pretty cheap panel. I can't sync my frame rate. Okay, so on your TV, you're now gonna see a desktop environment. Now this is being powered by your phone through that USB-C dongle to the TV. So it's pretty crazy. It's acting as if it's like a gaming console or a laptop, just any HDMI source pushing out to the TV. Now, what you're gonna do next on your mobile phone is you're gonna swipe down from the top and you're gonna have an option that says, use your phone as a touchpad. Tap on that and now you're gonna get this black screen. Now this actually gives you a mouse. You can see this whizzing around on the TV. So if we just go, okay, it now acts as if it's a laptop. So if I set this down uh, on the dense bench here, I can move around and we've got like all my apps. We have a full computer uh, pretty much running through the TV. Now, that's pretty impressive if you've never seen it before, uh, but if you've been up to date with what your phone can do, the DeX environment is nothing new. But what is really cool is this portable editing solution that I've come up with. So taking a uh, the Logitech MX Anywhere 2S mouse. Now this is a Bluetooth mouse that you can pair up with your phone. Turning Bluetooth on your phone will also help. Okay, so now just paired up the uh, mouse with the phone as you're about to see up there. So now if I move this mouse around down here, we're now moving the cursor on the TV. So that is like just phenomenal. Like that's just next level. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna turn this light off that's glaring for you. So. What's next? Well, we now we've got a mouse. What else could you use with the computer? I know, a keyboard. So, just grab any standard, uh, now you need to buy like a cheap one, sorry. Nothing with fancy lights, just a low power keyboard. Also makes it really lightweight to chuck in your luggage. So, ooh, this is getting pretty wild. Grab the keyboard, plug that straight into the uh, USB-C adapter. All right, so now you've got your full size keyboard, your mouse. Okay, so here on the desktop we've got Rush. So if you open that up, you're gonna get the app interface. I'm just gonna click the maximize button. Let's make it uh, full screen and give us more of a view of our timeline. Using the uh, phone screen with the trackpad, I'm going to zoom in and you can see us uh, tracking now through our timeline at the shots that uh, was taken. So with this, we're gonna go back. And you can see I've got a title here. Now this is done 
by using the titles tool which is, becomes in the top right hand corner. So if you click on that, here we've got the modern title. We're just going to edit it and as you can see, uh, well now it's gone back to being my accent. So I'm just going to click on it there and use my keyboard to type back in my title. So China Town. So now I've got this uh, time lapse. It comes up and it says Chinatown and that runs across and then it goes up. So that is our intro. Now let's just rearrange some clips. So rearrange clips, click and hold and you can lift them up. You can move them across. Now if we look over here, we've got some transitions. So we can do some dip to blacks or some fades, which is uh, known as cross dissolve in your transition set there. You also get color grading options. So you can choose a cinematic grade. Look at that, completely changes the look change your intensity in the bottom right hand corner so you can just give him just like a little bit of an edge see how it brings out that contrast in the footage nice so that works well now another thing you can do with each clip double click with your mouse uh, or double tap on your phone and you get all of the transform options available to you so you can change the opacity uh, down to 50 percent and if you layer it then over something else so if we click and drag up we're going to see that other footage through what we're looking at. So we're gonna have the two layers here. Now you've also got some audio settings. Uh, you can set what type uh, of audio it is, so if it's voice or if it's music, and it will do some auto ducking for you. So if you've got music playing, uh, you can then record an audio track and it's going to just dip the audio whenever you speak. And it looks like Adobe Rush has crashed again. So <laughs> the way that I get around that is I just click home, let it load back up and if it loads back up I go back into the project if not I will just force quit the app uh, same as what you do on a Mac same as what you do on Windows by going to task manager just close off anything that's running uh, reopen the, the app and it usually has any changes saved it is an auto save style app so from the hotel room to the train ride home I was able to put this 30 second edit together in about two hours enjoy You must be wondering how the app is. Well, it crashes a lot, just like any Adobe Premiere app. Now, I do think that's partly to blame because I fed it some G7X footage. Now, this isn't ridiculous raw footage, but it is a lot more than what a mobile phone would capture in quality wise. So since then, I've tested shooting some footage with just the inbuilt camera app on the Galaxy S9, and it edited it fine using just the plain video app. If I use Filmic Pro, so that's an app that allows you to get high quality 4K footage from your mobile phone, it crashed the app again. So it really depends on what you're feeding it. So if you wanted to make something high quality and you're using like tools that, you know, a little bit above your general consumer, then the app is going to crash. And because of that, I don't recommend buying this app. If you have an existing Adobe subscription, then fine. Download it, utilize it. Although it is free in the App Store, they only give you three exports and then they ask for you to pay. And I'll put the prices up here. I can't remember them, but there's something ridiculous for the just glitchy, incompetent version that you've been get given on the phone. Speaking of phones, if you're interested, check out my Daydream View video, which turn your phone into a virtual reality headset. Otherwise, check out the recommended video coming up there, and Bruce and I will catch you in the next video. Okay, so the apps just crash, as you probably can see on the screen. Um, not ideal. I'm just gonna try and restart it, see what happens.